Melvin Goes to Dinner stars Matt Price, Annabelle Gerwich, Stephanie Courtney, and Michael Bleeden. Bleeden. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Very metal. And I don't know who these folks are. They all sort of look familiar. They all look familiar, especially the two ladies. Your library, your local library, might have a copy of this. Mine does. And if you choose to watch that there movie, you can borrow this vase. Why would you want to borrow this vase <laughs> if you're going to watch that movie? Because this note here, um, is in perfect tune with the song, uh, when the credits roll at the end. I found this out by accident. I was tapping on this, and you roll the end credits. You can just rhythm along with this here vase if you borrow it from me, and you should. You'd have to pay shipping, of course, wouldn't you? Um, Melvin goes to dinner, which was uh, is based on a play, or it is a it's from a play. I don't want to say it's based on or from because based on could mean so many things like, you know, the way that uh, Forbidden Planet is based on Tempest by William Shakespeare. The play was originally called, hang on, Pop, Phyro Giants that word Phyro really gets in the way of knowing what the title is and committing it to memory and liking the title. So I'm glad they chose to change it to Melvin Goes to Dinner. Although if I had named a movie Melvin Goes to Dinner, I would have made a different movie. But this is a good movie. I think. I think it's good. You know, I've always liked dialogue movies. Um, Day Trippers. Uh, the Last Supper. The Last Supper. I think that's what it's called. With Courtney B. Vance, I believe was in it. That Spike. Get on the bus. Spike Lee. See that movie, even if you hate Spike Lee. Even if you hate most of his movies. My Dinner with Andre. Hey, this is a dinner dialogue movie. Like My Dinner with Andre. It's not like My Dinner with Andre. No. I don't know if I should blame this on the movie or on myself. Because I don't pay attention to movies as strictly as I used to. I used to just lock in, you know? And rewind. To make sure I get everything. Rewind again. I don't do that anymore. But this seemed like one of those movies that's edited uh, where you're supposed to sort of hang loose as it gives you various scenes that are out of sequence with one another. Although when I listen to the commentaries, they mentioned uh, flashbacks. So maybe what I was seeing was flashbacks that were adequately set up. But I don't think that's the case. I think it was one of those out of sequence movies where you're supposed to hang loose and take it all in and either follow the absolute sequence of out of sequence or not care and still get the movie. 
I got the movie. I got it. I could have gotten confused and turned it off, but I didn't. Am I pausing too much? Am I, is this annoying? Because, you know, I'm trying to stay loose and not be such a perfectionist that I have to uh, keep re-recording everything to get rid of the awkward pauses and stuff like that. Yeah, awkward pauses and reflection in my glasses. Like that reflection right there. And that one there. And that one there. And that one there. Yep, this is supposed to be a movie review, all right. The focal point of the movie is, is uh, a dinner uh, between four people at, at a restaurant. And they talk about stuff. What do they talk about? Sex, religion, infidelity, fetishes, ghosts. Okay, first of all, infidelity and fetishes is are both subheadings under sex, wouldn't you think? Religion and ghosts are related too. But then again, religion and sex and infidelity and fetishes are related too. And sometimes maybe ghosts and fetishes are related saying you know all right that's very gimmicky to say yeah <clears throat> these are the things that they talk about but it's a story it's a real story and you know but they talk about this stuff and I guess all of these things are very important to the story I guess it is a uh, an r-rated film <clears throat> language and sexuality, including sexual dialogue. Um, it says Sundance Channel Entertainment right here, so it must be good. I don't know. Oh, the really cool thing, I'll tell you, here's the thing that proves how good this movie is. Not that it's, a, it's, it's not like, you know, number 10 on a scale from 1 to 10, but, you know, so I'm not overblowing it. But I just want to tell you this. I noticed this. This movie has cameos by, uh, boy, if they had a list of uh, people on here, that would be very convenient. Oh, hang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This movie, okay, this is part one of my statement. This movie has cameos by Maura Tierney, David Cross, Jack Black, and what's that young lady's name? Something Fisher. Jenna Fisher, the girl in the office. The girl in the office. Who else? I think there's a couple other cameos. Anyway, that's impressive, you know, to get... Uh, these big stars to uh, to do cameos like that, and um, the thing is, it wasn't until I listened to the commentary that I was reminded of all these cameos. That at the end of this movie, when I watched it, I wasn't thinking about all the extra cast, all these people who sort of showed up and did their little two minutes or whatever. I'd forgotten that they were in this movie. And I was just, you know, focusing on on this cast. You know, that's what I was left with, these four people. Whose names are, again, Matt Price, Annabelle Gerwich, Stephanie Courtney, and Michael Bleeden.